Welcome to Mrs. V's Reading Corner, where you can enjoy books for educational, fun, or even bedtime stories. Please take the time to like this video, comment below with how you enjoyed it, book suggestions, and more. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get all the new books that I post first. Lost City, The Discovery of Machu Picchu by Ted Lewin. In his first journey to South America, Yale Professor Hiram Bingham longed to explore the hidden lands that lay beyond the snow-capped peaks of the Andes. Legend had it that the lost city of the Inca, Vilcapampa, lay there. Bingham was determined to discover it. So in 1910, the Yale Peruvian expedition was organized. Finally, in July 1911, Bingham and his fellow adventurers arrived in Cusco, the first capital city of the Inca. What lay ahead for them was far from what they had expected and more amazing. Our story begins high in the mountains of Peru. The boy looks out at the cloud-covered peaks all around him. Already his papa was working in the trench fields, but last night he had dreamed of a tall stranger carrying a small black box. He could not get the dream out of his mind. Suddenly, the clouds burned off and the mountains were bathed in glorious light. The day foretold of something wonderful, he was sure. 60 miles south in Cusca, Hiram Bingham gazed thoughtfully at the old Incan stone wall. He had come to Peru in search of Vilca Pampa, the lost city of the Inca. But right here was the most beautiful stonework he had ever seen. Huge stones cut so perfectly that not even a razor blade could be slipped between them. The Inca had no iron tools to carve them, no wheels or trapped animals to move them. The wall had withstood time and earthquakes. How had the Inca built it? It was a mystery. He walked through the cobbled stone. He walked through the cobbled streets of the old capital. The Spanish had come to this city, conquered the Inca, taken their gold, and built churches over their temples. Suddenly, he stopped. Before him was the famous Temple of the Sun. He placed his hands on the sun-warm stone so beautifully carved as if they had grown together. Hidden in the mountains, the lost city would be built of stone like these. Would it hold gold and fabulous riches like the Spanish had found in Costco? More than ever, he was determined to find that city. The next day, Bingham began his search. He would look for ruins that might be the key. He and his party, accompanied by military escort Sergeant Caresco, left by mule train for the scarce valley of the Urubamba River. They came to the sleepy old village of Oyambi Tambo, long ago an important city. Its ancient stone trenches stepped up into the clouds. Are there any ruins nearby? Bingham asked. He went door to door. He sat for hours in a cantina. Are there any ruins near here? He asked anyone who came in. Do you know of the lost city of Vilca Pampa? No one knew of it. Traveling north, the adventurers came upon a remote and wild canyon. Granite cliffs rose thousands of feet above the roaring rapids of the Urubamba River. In the distance 
were snow-capped mountains over three miles high. Bingham's determination to find the lost city grew with each turn of the increasingly wild trail. Meanwhile, high on one of the granite ridges, the boy tried to help his papa on the trenches. But he couldn't shake the dream from his mind. Who was this stranger with the black box? When would he come? What was in the black box? Anxiously, he searched the mountains for a sign. Far below in the valley, Bingham's party camps on a sandy beach alongside the thundering rapids of the Urambamba. Days had gone by. He was tired and discouraged. No one knew of any ruins. But now the travelers arose the curiosity of a local farmer named Artiaga. Are there ruins nearby? Bingham asked. When Artiaga ventured into camp, this time through the interpreter, the farmer said, Yes, there are very good ruins on top of the mountain called Machu Picchu. The farmer pointed straight up. Can you take us there? Bingham asked. No, said Artiaga. It is a very hard climb and there are many snakes. Bingham offered him coins. Artiaga nodded. He would show them the way. Artiaga led them down the river trail. Suddenly, he plunged into the jungle. Bingham and the sergeant followed Artiaga through the dense undergrowth down to the very edge of the river to a flimsy bridge made of slim logs. What was he getting himself into? Sergeant Cotoresco and Arteaga took off their shoes and crossed easily, gripping with their bare feet. Bingham was terrified. He creeped across the bridge on hands and knees. One slip and he would be dashed to pieces in the roaring torrent below. They climbed the bank into dense jungle. Now the slopes were slippery and the heat terrible. Artiga had warned them of the fertile lands, a various venomous snake. Bingham's eyes searched the jungle. Up and up they climbed. The wide river was now but a silver thread far below. Artiaga could think of nothing but the farty lance. Sergeant Caresco thought about his good sturdy shoes. Bingham thought of nothing but the lost city. They cut their way through the tangled thickets. Up and up they climbed. An hour had passed. Two, three, now they creeped on all fours. They slipped and slid. In some places, they held on by their fingertips. Finally, thirsty and exhausted, they broke through the jungle into sunlight. Above them stood a little Quechua boy beside a stone hut. What could he be doing at the top of this mountain? Amayuye, Amakehi, Amasua. Don't lie, don't be lazy, don't steal. The boy called out in the traditional Kewa greeting. It was the tall stranger from his dream, carrying the black box. The boy's whole family crowded around to greet the exhausted travelers then brought gourds of cool water and boiled sweet potatoes. Bingham, still gasping for breath, asked, where are the ruins? The boy said, am we, am we, come, come. Bingham and the sergeant left Artiaga behind and followed at the boy's urging. Am we, am we, he kept saying, at first, they saw only stone trenches 
like the ones they had seen in Ali Tentembo. They looked as if they had been recently cleared of jungle and vegetarian burnt off in order to plant crops. But there were no ruins, just more jungle beyond. Bingham had climbed this mountain and found no lost city. Am we? Am we? Still, the boy beckoned him into the jungle beyond. Reary and discouraged, Bingham followed. At first, all he saw was bamboo thickens and more tangled vines. Then he looked closer. Through the vines, he saw stones. Inca stones, then walls, beautiful stone walls. They were covered with mosses and trees. Jawi, Jawi, see, see, the boy whispered, pointing ahead to a curved stone wall. Bingham pushed his way to it and placed his hands on the fine granite stones. A sun temple more beautiful even than the one in Costco. They came to a grand stone staircase. Where could this lead? What else was here? Jawi, Jawi, the boy called. At the top of the staircase was a clearing, a small vegetable garden, and then a temple built of humongous stones grander than any Bingham had ever seen. It stole his breath away. Something was going on here. He could sense it, something just beyond his eyes. What was it? He followed the boy to another temple. As magnificent. This one had three windows, but now he looked across the countryside. He looked past the thickets, past the vines. He began to see the outlines of stone streets and stone cottages. He began to see the outlines of a city. Here, boy, he said as he opened the black box that he had been carrying, extended the bellows and focused his camera. The first picture would be of the boy. The boy who had led him to Velka Pampa, lost city of Inca. But about this, Bingham was wrong. When the vines were removed and the tales told, he had discovered not Velka Pampa, but a place even more amazing. He had stumbled on Machu Picchu, a city lost in time, a city lost in the clouds. The end.